So Dan called me Sunday night. He's got a client he's representing. Okay, in a block. It looks something like this. Okay, north is this way. And this parcel does something like this. Actually, does this. Okay, this is the street. Street on all sides. Okay. This is a vacant lot. This has a building on it. Basically, the building's built to the property line. It's what we call zero setback. So this guy's building. Let's see if I can do building hash, Danny. This guy's building basically occupies the full lot. Does that make sense, girls? Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. Right. The client, so, that's the client? That's Dan's client. So this developer buys that lot, I don't know, a year or two ago. And he's going to take a vacant lot, and he's going to put four stories of apartments on it. Okay. And how much of this vacant lot do you think he's going to take up, Danny? Probably everything. <laughs> 95%. As much as he possibly can. He's going to be on zero setback, too. Okay, now, there's a what reason. Zero setback? zero setback means the building is on the property line. So in most places, they do not let you put a building on zero setback. Is that like the okay. place around the corner well, from my How house? are they going to have room for parking? Exactly, yes. they don't. That place that I like to get yeah. tamales from. Yeah, it's at zero setback That's on the front. That's horrible, right? Yeah. Part of the conditions will be how many parking stalls. Yeah. Are. Oh yeah, they're going to make him put horrible. parking in. It'll probably be okay. on the bottom story. Okay, okay so Dan calls me because there's two problems that they're having now. Okay, now you get through to it. And this developer, this devel I'll tell you what's going to happen here. Dan's going to sue this developer, and this project's going to go bankrupt. And so I want to explain why. Okay, That's what I suspect is going to happen. They may settle. Okay, So there's two things going on here. The sewer line that serves this building runs through this lot. And they got to get to it in order to make their okay. building. So the developer goes to start construction. The first thing they do is they, they do what we call, I call blade the lot or grub, grub, blade or grub the lot. They scrape the lot and they start digging for the foundation. So they got the excavator out there because they're probably putting a two-story basement in here because that's where they're all the electrical utility stuff and they're probably put part, maybe put part, mm -hmm. parking down there. So they go to dig a two-foot basement, and they sever this guy's sewer line. They cut through it with a bucket. Okay. By his, accident. By accident. Okay. okay. As soon as they cut through his sewer line, he had to vacate this building. What is that building? Wow. It's a commercial business. It's so he a business, he right? had to tell his tenant, "You got to get out because he has no other way to get sewer service." Okay. So. And what the city won't let you have tenants in a building without sewer service. Right. So, I don't know. This is in Martinez. It's probably 1,200 square feet or 1,500 square feet. Danny, what do you think that's renting for a month? Or two grand. Let's put a number on it. This is probably low, but let's say it's two grand. Two grand a month. Okay, so every day or every month that building sits vacant because he doesn't have sewer service. What's the bill? It's costing them two grand. At least two grand. Okay. Okay, now here's the other problem. On this building, on this side of the building, there is a big roll-up garage door. Okay. That they need to be able to access to go in and So for a long, long time, they've just been driving over this vacant lot. You can see the tire tracks. They've just been driving in and out of here. So they that's, their, that's their, um, whatchamacallit. So they've got access in and out of that roll-up door. What do they call that? Okay, so hold on. I'm talk to that. <laughs> you know so Dan calls me and he says, hey, he says, I can't find in the tire report an easement for the sewer line or for the access to this roll up door. He said, can you do some poking around and let me know, he says nothing in the tower report, but can you pull the survey maps and the deeds and let me know if you find anything? I said, sure. So we looked, okay, and we didn't find anything. We could have, but we just didn't. Sometimes the tower company misses them. We couldn't find anything. So I gave Dan a couple other things to check. I said, hey, pull these improvement plans, get them from the city, see if they show this sewer service I said, uh, we can't get the neighbor's deed. I said, get the neighbor's deed because the neighbor's deed may refer to the easement. Okay. But let's just say for argument's sake that, that they're, they're, the easements were never recorded for the sewer line or for this access. Okay. Can you remember this lot's been vacant? Did this owner care? 
No, how long, no. How long was no. it vacant? For about, it's been vacant for a hundred years. Oh, wow. So that's theirs Why right is now. someone all of a sudden buying it? Okay, so what's happened to property values in the Bay Area the last oh. 10 years? It's what? They're going to put four stories of that's apartments what on the here. That's the thing. There's a big push yeah. right now so for more apartments. He just told houses. me they're going to put up 14 and apartments. So let's do yeah, some math. See, that's why what's an apartment rent? Up. A brand new apartment. In, in, Martina, in Martinez. Probably four grand. I don't know. Yeah. Let's let's be I'll conservative. Say, okay, let's say twenty five then. Let's well, say yeah, out here for one go is three. fourteen. Okay. Yeah. So somebody get their Danny do that math. Fourteen times three. Well, and they're getting incentives for building more housing because of the homeless crisis in California. Month. Okay, so forty two thousand dollars a month or times twelve, Danny. Is that half a mil? Plus all the credits he gets. Four thousand. Okay. Sure. So I don't know. I'm gonna put a rough value on this. This is probably a ten to twenty million dollar apartment building in in value. Okay. So vacant lot is now gonna be worth ten to twenty million. Okay. So let's just say for argument's sake that we don't find an easement. Here's what Dan's gonna do. This is what I told the real estate agents this morning. The statutory period, that means by law, okay, by law, statutory it. period for unwritten rights, what we call un unwritten rights means you get rights to somebody else's property without a deed. Unwritten rights. In California, using it. Yeah. California, five years. That's one of the shortest statutory periods in the nation. Some states are 20 years, but California is five. What that means is if somebody uses your property without your permission for five years and they meet some other criteria, they get unwritten, unwritten rights to your land. So even if we don't find an access easement and a sewer easement, Dan is going to sue this developer and he's going to go to court and he's going to say, hey, th how long, this building's 40 years old. How long have they been using the sewer and the, the roll-up door? 40 years. 40 years. They are way beyond the statutory period. Are they fixing the issue that they cut off their sewer? No, this, the developer told the neighbor, screw you. You don't have an easement. What? Because this is somebody that's not educated, right? He's not. Listen, Danny, what percentage of people in the world know about unwritten rights? Very, very. 5%. So you mean to tell me because there's no documented easement that that He's building is his. using that sewer line that that guy could cut it and that's SOL for the... No, because... because this guy has unwritten rights, but most people don't know about right, unwritten but, rights. Right, right, but otherwise, if looking at it with- There's some other legal right. doctrines. There's like easement by necessity, and there's some other things that I want to get into today. Okay. But here's the point. Just because you don't have a paper easement, doesn't mean that your neighbor doesn't have rights. He right. could very well have unwritten rights. Based in fact, in most theory. cases in a situation like this, the neighbor does have unwritten rights because the use has been for longer than five years. Okay? so. And we still don't know that there isn't an easement. Somebody could find an easement. Tile, Where? tile companies miss easements. They get lost in the sands of time. That happens. Is there, a, how would that property have been able to be sold without the easement documented? Okay, so this is a great illustration. Um, so let me come back to your question. Can you remember that? Yeah. Okay, let me just tell you about what's going to happen here. So Dan's going to sue this guy and they're going to go to court. But they don't settle. They're going to go to court. And Dan's going to tell the judge, Judge, this has been 40 years worth of use. We have a prescriptive right for both the access and the sewer line. And the judge is going to say, yeah, you're right. You do. And he's going to tell this guy, you have 30 days to restore sewer service. And I'm going to give this guy a 10-foot easement out to the public street. Now, when this guy gets a 10-foot access easement. It's going to cut his to his, his roll-up yeah. door. Okay, the sewer line's not as big of a deal because that's underground, although that could completely require a redesign of both the basement and the utilities. But the real issue is he's going to get a 10-foot access to that roll-up door. What's that going to do to the footprint of this apartment? It's going to get totally changes. Now, here's the problem. If you take this number and go from 14 to 6, what do you just do to that deal? Cut it half. That deal goes under, probably. Okay, so when this deal goes under, now here's the problem. Or you add another story. You here's, the, here, here's the problem. <laughs> Who's really on the hook for the money here, probably? The investor, the one that yeah, invested not in the, the developer. It's probably not the developer, because did the developer have the money to finance this deal? Well, the bank is out. Yeah, the bank. Yeah. So here's what the bank's going to do. So Dan's going to sue the neighbor. We're going to blow this project up, probably. Okay. 
And I could have to testify about the unwritten rights. There's a possibility of that. Would it, but can't the developer also now sue the okay, engineer? Okay, so, so let, me tell you, the, okay. let me tell you what's going to happen. Dan's going to sue the developer. developer. We're going to blow up the project. Okay? The developer is going to stop making payments on his construction loan. Okay? The bank is going to sue. The developer's bank is going to sue. Now, let's just go down the list. Because who's going to be out the money when the developer stops making payments? The bank. The bank. So let's just go down the list of who the bank is going to sue. So who's the bank going to sue, guys? The yeah. title company. The bank is going to sue the title company. Who else is the bank going to sue? The agent that... The, the bank is going to sell the broker yeah. that sold this property. Right. Right? Not yeah. our property. The broker that sold also, this property. Also, I feel like okay? the engineer... The bank is going to sue the design engineer. Yeah. Because should, shouldn't he have caught that when he went yeah, to the pool? Yeah, the design the engineer yeah. should have figured out exactly. that this building had sewer service through that. Right. right? And, and, and how are you designing your plan? Exactly. I feel like it ultimately falls on him because if he wouldn't have designed They're all going to get sued. Yeah. Now, if a land surveyor did an Alta survey on this and he didn't show that roll-up door, the surveyor should sue. he's getting sued too. They're going to sue everybody. They're going to sue the title company, the broker, oh, the, the surveyor, survey, and the engineer. When was that property surveyed last? Well, I don't know. There's nothing on file. But That's there, if you okay, find so something on There is a chance that the, that a surveyor did an ALTA survey on this to get the What's an ALTA survey? land title survey okay. to get the loan. Remember I told you on commercial properties, a lot of times the lender will make you get a land yeah, title survey. Yeah. So there's a chance that the, sur that the surveyor did a land title survey okay, to get the loan. Okay, so... Let's just say that's the case. There's two problems this surveyor's got. One is he did a land title survey. Danny, did he file with the county? No. And he was required by law because this parcel isn't on a survey. So as soon as I find out that that surveyor did a land title survey and he didn't file, what am I going to tell Dan? How could you find out if he didn't file? Because it's there. I know he didn't file because it's not on record. So how will you find it's, out? And there's a process called discovery in a lawsuit. They'll figure it out. How? Okay? It's, it's called discovery. I'm not, I don't want to get into detail. There's a way. You have, the other side's got to give you their stuff. Okay? So here's what I'm saying. Right, you mean it's like somebody was given a copy of a map somewhere? Yeah, there's a, there's a land title survey. Listen, I guarantee you the lender has it. And who's going to be doing the lawsuits? Because there's a chance that it could have gone through without that survey, though. There's a small chance this deal went down without a land title survey. Okay, yeah. And then the bank deserves what they're getting. In my opinion. Like maybe the property was inherited. Well, no. Ago. Well, no. This deal got financed. I almost guarantee you. The only way it didn't get financed is if there was some some really rich person that was going to front the money for this. But that's not typical. That's 5% of deals. 95% of deals get financed. Okay. So, so back to my question. How was the realtor able to sell? Okay. So hold on because I'm not done. Okay. Well, hang on to your question. So there's two possibilities here. There's three possibilities. Self-financed. Okay. Right. 5% chance of that. Okay. The bank made the loan without a land title survey, or the bank made a loan and there's a land title survey. Okay, let's just go back. If it was self-financed or the bank did the loan without the survey, the bank is still going to sue the engineer, the broker, and the title company. Right, because they're just, there won't be, should have given that. Yeah, but there just there won't right. be the surveyor won't be sued because there is no surveyor. Okay, right, but right, right. Let me explain. This is important. If there is a land title survey on that loan, okay, the surveyor is in deep crap. Because number one, he didn't file. As soon as you don't file when you're required by law, what does that make you look like as a surveyor? You're negligent on your yeah. license. Yeah, you're already negligent. You're, you're already that. a schmuck, right? And second of all, if the land title, if the land surveyor did that title survey and he didn't show up that roll of door or the tire tracks on the survey, he's negligent and he's they are gonna get him for his insurance policy. And here's the problem. What's that surveyor's insurance policy worth? He could be dead by a you. million. What's the project worth? 10 to 20. How does that work if he if a surveyor's passed away and then come to find out? You're screwed, so you better hope the surveyor's not okay. dead. This this deal went down in the last five years. He's not dead. Okay. He's not dead. If there was a surveyor, he's not dead. So listen, he didn't, if he didn't show up the roll-up door or the access in and out, even if there was a driveway cut in the curb here, and he didn't show that, he, he's negligent. He's going to get hammered. And if I was doing a land title survey of this lot, Danny, this is what I learned from this. Should you know where this adjacent building is getting utility service? Yeah. Yeah. You. Yeah. And listen, if the sewer yeah, lines here, the if the sewer right lines here, Danny, what do I expect to sit right here? Clean out. A clean out. A sewer clean out. And if that surveyor saw that clean out and didn't and didn't it. ask the questions on his title survey, he's negligent, and he's going to get sued. Because that's what the um, 
that's what the Ulta surveys it's are for. for specific yeah, stores that's for what the developer for. to, to okay, do. So yeah. Okay, so we learned some things. Does the Ulta survey have to get done before the engineer starts his piece of design? No, but it typically is. Yeah, okay, that yeah, makes typically sense. Is. Okay, right. so let's talk yeah. about Let's talk about Vanessa's question. So, Vanessa, what was your question? Uh, how were they able to sell the property if if they didn't have? Okay, so this gets Anything back. About this, the this gets back to the ignorance versus education problem. They sold this broker sold this property, right? Because you have to provide the engineer yeah. plans in order to get the loan. No, right? yeah, but that that's before the sale. They sold this property, okay, to the developer, okay. Does the broker understand the significance of this roll-up door? No, they probably no. do not even look at Does he the understand property. the significance of that clean-out? Well, no, because no. nobody's even seen it. Did that. the broker even read the title report? No. Probably not. Probably not. That's how it happens. People are ignorant. And like, look, this is somebody getting sued. That we are gonna tank Dan is gonna tank a ten to twenty million dollar deal. Are you gonna have to testify? I'm gonna that? help him do it. Yeah. Right? And like, do I feel sorry for anybody involved in this transaction? No. So where does it affect all the people, all the parcels below? Well, it doesn't unless they also, you know, these guys could have a uh, little Yeah, there could yeah, be more, I just don't more know. stuff into play. I just don't know. I just don't know. But I thought this was a good story. They yeah. haven't. They're probably coming out to the street. Yeah, we, we would have heard about it. Cause... Probably, because they'd have severed those lines too when they dug the basement. Oh, again, we get an email saying that... Did that this same contractor severed another line? Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah, it's gonna get bigger. I feel like those other parcels are gonna. Uh, I don't know, dude. This is a chocolate mess. So good lessons for me and you on land title surveys, right? Everything you Damn, see. We better look at those adjacent buildings real hard, it, right? It's more than just. A, it's more than just your parcel, isn't it? Yeah. You better look at those adjoiners. Now here's the other thing. Look at this. Look at this right here. Yeah, we've got problems. Oh, wait, that's I thought that's it was not normal. Drawing. No, <laughs> it actually juts out like that. That's weird. There's something going on there. And Danny and I checked this guy's deed. We're not even talking about this parcel now. This deed doesn't match what's shown on the assessor's plat. This thing is this block is all screwed up. So now I don't know what's going to happen, but typically before you can go to court and have a guy like me testify, you got to get a good survey. We may get paid to freaking figure this whole thing out. Right. So you can re because they have lot line adjustment. As a, right? at a, at a Usually, as a bare minimum, if I'm going to go to court and testify about title and survey issues, we have to have a survey. So, if you have to make, if they do grant him an easement, does that mean that there's a lot line adjustment involved in no, that now? No, no. In this case, no, because there'll just be easements exchanged. Now, here's the here's where a, the issue could be: if this building is over the line, that could create other problems. Because somebody needs some property back. Yeah, well, they got to do an LLA right. again. They could have unwritten rights to the building, land under the building. Dang. Okay. Yep. This is a this is a Who has unwritten rights. This guy could have unwritten rights for his building. Mm. If his but let's just say that property line is right here. Let's just say that the property line actually goes like this. Okay. So this part right here is encroaching, and this part right here is encroaching. Okay. He could have unwritten rights to that because he's occupied it for four years. For first and, off, and but, then second utility. Well, but here's the problem that creates. You can't sell property with unwritten rights. It's very hard to do because you can't get title insurance. And as a general rule in America, you can't sell property without title insurance. Bank won't, banks won't finance. So, so what, like, look, it's not just this guy's in trouble. What is this guy realizing so about his property? Anybody that has property that has unwritten rights will not get a loan to buy that property. You it's very hard to sell if you have unwritten rights because the title company is going to say, you got to go to court and clean up your unwritten rights. Do you go to a court, you get, there's a process called quiet title. You go to a judge and you say, we have unwritten rights, judge. We want you to make a ruling. The judge drops the hammer. There's a court court ruling that gets recorded. Now the title company will insure. But you got to go to court to get that done. Because it needs to be acknowledged. Because yeah, yeah. until you go see a judge, it could go either way. 